This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This lecture looks at question two from June 2013. Again, for this you are strongly advised to have downloaded a copy of the question from the ACCA website. This is a numerical question, there's quite a lot of detail in it. And again, you should read through it for 10 minutes or so before continuing with the lecture. So if you can do that now, uh, pause the lecture, and then when you're ready to recommence, we'll continue by reading through the question together. OK, as with all questions, you go to the requirements first. Uh, you need to find out what on earth is this question uh, about. Uh, and the requirements down here evaluate the impact of using activity-based costing comparing uh, compared to the existing costing system for customer care uh, on the cost of both types of product. It says how the information on each activity can be used and improved upon at Navia in assisting cost reduction and quality management in the customer care department. Okay, so uh, it's all to do with activity-based costing. Uh, and I suppose, having read that, uh, one kind of assumes one's going to have to do some sort of activity-based costing calculations. Anyway, let's uh, read through and see what it says. So Navia Aerial's company uh, manufactures satellite dishes for receiving satellite television signals. Navia supplies the major satellite TV companies who install standard satellite dishes for their customers. The company also manufactures and installs a small number of specialist satellite dishes to individuals or businesses with specific needs. The Chief Executive Officer wants to initiate a programme of cost reduction at Navia. His plan is to use activity-based management to allocate costs more accurately and to identify non-value-adding activities. So we've got something we need to maybe just mention in, in here. Uh, it does talk about non-value-adding activities and we do want to allocate costs more accurately. And really, there are two types of dis uh, um, dishes. There's the specialised ones uh, there, and presumably there's what we would call the, the ordinary or basic dishes. At present, the finance director absorbs the cost of customer care into the product cost on a per unit basis using the data in Table 1. He then tries to correct the problem of unrealistic costing whatever way he may have identified that, by making rough estimates of the cost to be allocated to each product based on the operations director's impressions. So, of course, impression here implies a, a certain amount of inaccuracy. His impressions of the amount of work of the department in fact, he simply adds 100 above the standard absorbed cost to the cost of the specialised disk to cover the assumed extra work. So we have here a kind of an arbitrary plus 100. The cost accountant has gathered information for customer care department in Table 2 from interviews. She has used this information to correctly calculate the total costs of each activity using activity-based costing in Table 3. So we've actually got here some activity-based costing completed for us. And we could, in a way, call these... Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're not quite there per unit, but in terms of the total standard aerials and the total specialised aerials or discs, we know what these costs have come down to. So presuming that we'll add a cross like that. So we don't have to go through and do all of this uh, kind of cost cause or cost driver stuff uh, between each of those that's been done for us.
The CEO wants you as a senior management accountant to complete the work required for a comparison of the results of the current standard absorption costing to activity-based costing for the standard and specialised dishes. Once this is done, the CEO wants you to consider the implications for management of the customer care process of the costs for each activity in that department. The CEO is especially interested in knowing how the information might impact on the identification of non-value added activities, we've got that one again, and the quality management at Navia. So here we have uh, some of the costing information. The cost is currently allocated based on 16,000 orders per year with uh, 5.5 dishes on average uh, per order. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite a lot of the, the cost driving stuff, I think, going down here. So we can work out here, you know, the 35,000 inquiries, uh, uh, how much is to be allocated to, to each type of order and uh, so on in, in, in that. We have uh, complaints handling, uh, 3,200 complaints a year. Okay, uh, we have 16,000 orders in a year. Uh, which we knew 16,000 was up there and so on. 90% of both inquiries and orders are for standard dishes. The remaining is for the specialised dishes. Handling uh, inquiries and preparing quotes for specialised dishes takes 20% of the time. And uh, there we uh, go on down. Each standard dish order contains an average of six dishes. Each specialized disc dish uh, order has got one, one dish. I'm not sure uh, to what extent we need to, I don't think we do really need to verify these figures here. They, they come back and say, I think it has been correctly done up here has gathered information for the customer care department to correctly calculate the total costs okay so these costs are all correct we we, we well although we can reproduce some of them uh, we don't have to reproduce those we, we've got halfway through the abc costing process really and we want to find out here evaluate the impact of using abc compared to the existing costing system for customer care on the cost of both types of product. Okay, uh, so what we need to do now is some finishing off kind of calculations uh, here. And uh, what I've done is I've taken these figures here and I've transcribed them onto a, a slide where we can uh, actually write and, and perform some more calculations. So here is table three, uh, exactly as it appeared in the question. Uh, what you ultimately need to do for activity-based costing is you want to get down to a cost per unit. Okay, And here we're basically comparing the total absorption cost per unit to the activity-based costing cost per unit. So let's think about the total absorption cost of per unit and we were told uh, in the question that there were 16,000 orders and that each order had an average of 5.5 dishes. So the total number of dishes that were um, sold, made, sold, whatever, is going to be uh, uh, yeah. The total number of dishes is going to be eighty-eight thousand. And the total absorption costing approach, which I'll do up here, leaving more room down below for uh, other calculations. Well, we have the total there, 707,000. 
and we'll divide that by 88,000 come out at 8.03 per dish so that's lumping everything together but then if you remember uh, we were told that the he was a finance director it tries to correct the problem of unrealistic costing in other words 8.03 by making a rough estimate of the cost to be allocated to each product and he simply adds a hundred above the standard absorbed cost the cost of a special disc to cover any extra work so it's a that per dish or for your specialist dish is going to be 108.03 okay okay so that's total absorption costing 803 uh, and then plus the arbitrary 100 108.03 how would this work out if we were to do it uh, using presumably the better activity based costing approach here and we were told that there were 16,000 orders and 90% of that was for standard orders so there's going to be 14,400 and we were also told that each uh, order Note six, each standard dish contains on average uh, an order for six dishes. So the number of standard dishes uh, that we were having to deal with, 14,400 times six, 86,400. 86,400. The other orders uh, is presumably 10% uh, of 16,000 is going to be uh, 1,600 orders. Each of these orders is for one dish, so that is the number of dishes there. So if we want to get the, the better cost per unit using a, a total absorption costing, it's going to be uh, taking this 86,400 and dividing it into each of these costs down there or indeed divided into the, the total we should find it all adds up but one of the things about activity-based costing is that when we we're doing absorption costing we lumped everything together into this uh, we divided by the 88,000 dishes and came out with this cost of 8.03 uh, but we maybe didn't inquire quite enough as to what caused the costs uh, what we'll do now to get a little bit more insight is to break down the global figures to see what the uh, each of these elements of cost is bringing to the cost of a dish so 226 240 divided by 86 400 uh, 262 63630 divided by 86,400. 0.74, that'll be the same for each of these. 95, 445 divided by 86,400. 1.10. And then finally, uh, 88,375 divided by 86,400, 1.02. Or we could have done it in total 537,320 divided by 86,400, uh, about 622. Now, in fact, it uh, could be a little rounding errors there, but I think it's going to add up okay. 2, 6, uh, 10, 12, that's okay, 7, 8, 9, and 13 is 22, 2, 3, 4, so yeah, 622. So the proper activity-based costing cost per unit 
of an ordinary dish is 622. On the other one, we're just dividing through by 1600 each time, so 56560 divided by 1600, uh, 3535, 7070, 442, same in the next one, 10605 divided by 1600, 663, and then 88375 divided by 1600, 5523. If we add these up, or take 169680 divided by 1600, 10605. Now five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's going to add up as well. So, 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 rounding errors are, are not actually present. Now, this is the more accurate cost per unit, and it means that our current total absorption costing cost for the ordinary dishes was a little bit too high. We had eight oh three under total absorption costing, and we have six twenty two uh, under the activity base costing. Does it matter if your costs are too high? Well, it, it can do, because if your costs are too high, it can be under some types of pricing, you set your selling price too high, you add on, let's say, cost plus at 25%, it can mean your, your selling price is that bit too high, and it can mean that you become uncompetitive. The other one, uh, we had thought here that the proper cost was going to be 108.03. This is by adding on this arbitrary 100. In fact, the proper cost is 106.05. So the, the finance director was actually quite accurate. Not too bad and in the guess to add a kind of arbitrary 100 on uh, uh, there. It should have been 106.05, but presumably didn't take off a compensating amount to get down to uh, 6.22 rather than 8.03. What uh, this is uh, showing us uh, here uh, is uh, really, if you want to save costs, and we might, might be going to part B, what does part B say here? To improve another area in assisting cost reduction. So let's, let's, let's leave that for, for part A. Uh, part A says, evaluate the impact of using activity-based costing compared to, to the existing costing system for customer care on the cost of both types of products there. And I think not a huge amount to say uh, af after this. I would say that the activity-based costing will more accurately identify what activities cause costs. You know, we talk about cost drivers and activity-based costing, but think about cost causes. And we uh, see, obviously, the specialist aerials are going to cost more than the ordinary areas here. But if you want to bring your, your, your costs down, what you need to do is to attack where the costs are highest first. That's the easiest way of doing it. Uh, and you'll see, as you go down the ordinary items here, that there is no great disparity, maybe. Okay, handling, inquiries and preparing, they, they certainly have got the, the biggest cost per unit. Everything else is around one, they're around two to three. They're all kind of in line, really. It's when you go down to the specialist areas here, you see we've got here four, four, six, all around the four, five, six here. And then suddenly, up here, we've got about eight or nine times that cost. And down here, uh, we again, this is about five, we're going to be 11, 10, 10 times that cost up, up, up there. So it's brought out two very costly activities when dealing with the specialist aerials handling inquiries in preparing quotes, uh, and then the complaints handling. Part B asks us to assess how the information on each activity can be used and improved upon a Navier in assisting cost reduction 
and quality management in the customer care department. So it's asking us to look at the information on each activity. And there are these uh, four or five activities going down here. Handling inquiries and preparing the orders, receiving actual orders, customer credit checks, supervision, and complaints. Let's deal with the easy ones first uh, here. Let's look at receiving the actual orders. Uh, we appear to have a, a big difference in, in here, 0.74 per unit, uh, 4.42 for the specialist orders. Uh, but if we look at it per order, remember we're getting six dishes here in one order on average. So 0 0.74 times six uh, per order, uh, we're dealing with 4.44. So, so basically, per order here, the receiving and administration of the receipt process of the order is the same for every order. And I suppose you would, would, we would expect that. It's just a, a bookkeeping or a kind of admin uh, activity to be looking at. Similarly here, customer credit checks. Uh, you wouldn't expect a customer credit check uh, for a specialist order to necessarily take any longer than a uh, customer credit check for ordinary dishes, even though there might be f six dishes on the you know the basic order and only one dish on the specialist order, you still have to look up that one customer. And we see again, it's it's pretty much in in, in line that per order, receiving actual orders and customer credit checks are the same per order. Okay. Nothing much to, I think, argue about on that. We could obviously try to get the whole costs of receiving and administering orders down and doing the, 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 the credit checks down and so on here. Uh, but these, these are very small costs, really, compared to the, the overall cost. Let's look at uh, one of the, the biggest costs here, uh, which is handling inquiries and preparing quotes. So we might start off by kind of assuming that uh, whether we have uh, a specialist order for one dish or uh, orders for six ordinary dishes, that maybe the cost of handling inquiries and preparing quotes was going to be the same. So let's, let's instead of working it out per uh, dish, uh, let's see what would happen if we were to work it out per order. So we have got cost there, 226, and we have um, 14,400, so 15.71 in there. So the, the cost of handling inquiries in preparing a quote for a specialist order with six dishes on it is 1571. The other one, 56, divided by 1600, number of orders there, is 35.35. So we have uh, per order roughly twice, a bit more than twice, uh, the cost of handling the inquiries and preparing quotes for a specialist order and for one of the standards ones. Now that might be unavoidable. These are, after all, orders for specialist units and presumably handling inquiries, talking to people, negotiating, finding out exactly what they want and, 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 and so on, and then preparing the quotes. Uh, there will be more work in the specialist disc than the ordinary disc, inevitably. And maybe there's nothing we can do about that. Maybe it is just uh, inherent because we're dealing with a more specialist, tailored sort of order, that we're going to have to take more time over it. And and, and this could be a value-added activity. It can be a value-added activity because talking to these customers with their specialist needs is adding value. It's uh, negotiating with them. It's convincing them that we know what they want and we can supply what they need. Let's look at the uh, supervision of the orders through manufacture to uh, delivery. And 
should we look at per order or should we look at per unit? Uh, and I think we could look at maybe per unit because presumably uh, we have to uh, you know, supervise that the units are being made properly and so on here. This is maybe the activity which is uh, really including the quality control sort of checks. I don't think it says particularly that that includes the quality control. I don't think it says particularly that that's including the uh, quality control, so not really. But uh, again, is it unreasonable that we've got kind of six times the the cost there? Uh, if, if we're looking at it uh, per unit, then 660, it's about the same, isn't it, actually? So per dish, uh, this is costing 660 because there's six dishes in one of those orders. This is costing 663. Uh, so per, per order, rather. So let's look at this supervision of order through manufacturer delivery. We have about a sixth of the cost per dish in there, but per order it's about the same because there are going to be uh, six dishes in one of these orders. So to supervise one order, whether it's an order for six standard dishes or an order for one specialist disc, it's costing about six each, 660 each. So there's not much difference in that. Okay, now let's look at the supervision of an order through manufacturing delivery. And it nearly appears that uh, this is much cheaper than, than the uh, specialist one. But remember, this is per dish. And in an order for ordinary dishes, there are on average six dishes. So uh, this would, for, for an order, be 660, is about the same as that. So it appears to be no additional costs really associated per order, whether it's an order for specialist discs, dishes, or ordinary dishes. The supervision of the order through manufacturing delivery seems to be the same, despite the fact that the idea of supervising the order, you might think it should actually cost a bit more over here, because this is a specialist dish, which you'd think would maybe need some more specialist supervision. The real difference comes out uh, in complaints handling, and we are told that 50% of the complaints are are received for specialist dish orders. 50% are received for specialist dish disc, dish orders. And uh, if we think uh, uh, here, you know, so, so there are 3,200 complaints every year. It says 50% uh, of complaints are received for specialist dish orders. I'm going to appear to be 1,600 complaints for the specialist and 1,600 complaints for the ordinary. So what are the rate of complaints going on here? Well, we have got 14,400 orders in there, 1,600. running there at about 11 percent and over here it seems to be running at 100 percent. It seems that every order uh, that is placed for specialist uh, dishes is coming out to be complained about. Seems weird, but that seems to be what it is. And if we look at the, the costs associated with that uh, here, uh, per order, it's going to be uh, about six here on average. So this is per dish, remember. But, but you know, either way we're going to look at it, there's a huge difference uh, in here. So either about $1 per dish is a complaint cost, or $55 per dish is a complaint cost, or $6 per order versus $55 per order. This 
rate of complaints in our specialist orders here running at 100%. Seems appalling. Uh, and this is, I think, you know, this is the biggest cost per dish as you go down these specialist ones here. 55 is by, high, the, by far the highest cost. And it's you know, th this is caused by quality problems because the question does talk here assisting cost reduction and quality management in the customer care department. And it might be that what we have to do is to spend a little bit more here in because we don't know what, whether some of the complaints are that in this uh, uh, handling inquiries and preparing quotes we get things wrong there that there's a, a miscommunication there or perhaps uh, whether it's here that the supervision of the order through manufacturing which we, we're seeing here is kind of the the same for each order even though you actually expect more trouble to be taken in supervision in the specialist one-off unique tailor-made sort of dishes whether we should maybe spend a little bit more there and it almost gets back to, to value chain and linkages, you know. These are activities which are being carried on by the business. They have to kind of link together. And in value chain analysis, you talk about linkages. You say how spending some more money in one activity may save some costs in another activity. But before you, you, you can think about that relationship, you have to know what these costs are, what these savings are. And activity-based costing at least gets the existing costs more accurately estimated uh, and then we can attack the big costs we will understand the way costs move that's part of activity based management to properly understand costs and make decisions based on those and uh, we might be able to get this cost way way down here this 55.23 per unit uh, just by putting this this up a little bit uh, and maybe the supervision up a little bit uh, we might well end up reducing the costs overall and increasing our profits.